name is Lenore Brayford. I am the founder and shelter manager here at Piedmont Farm Animal Refuge. And today we are visiting with some of our goat residents. This is Elliot. Elliot happens to be the leader of this herd. <laughs> we are in Goat House 3. Elliot actually was rescued from a shelter. And when he came to the refuge, uh, he was a little bit shy and timid, but as you can see from this video, he is very confident, very loving, and he loves to get scratches, and he will, uh, he is known for coming up to people and just rubbing and rubbing and rubbing all over you when you come to visit him today. Uh, we are in Goat House 3 right now, so also behind me you can see Caleb. Caleb actually came to us from New York from a butchery that was shut down due to neglect. And Caleb was originally supposed to stay up north at another sanctuary with his mom, but his mom unfortunately passed away and she did not make it after being rescued from that butchery. So Caleb uh, came down here along with some other goats and uh, is now one of the, the big top members of oh. the herd. And Elliot is checking out our camera person right there. Uh, let's go ahead and meet some other goats. We'll head over here and see who else wants to say hello. And if you'll notice, Sophie has a beard. Uh, she is a female, and even though um, she's a female, uh, some goats will have beards, some will not. It's not based on their sex, it's just based on their breed. Uh, you will also notice that Sophie does not have any horns, and unfortunately this is not natural. Uh, almost all goats, male or female, should have horns. <laughs> And if they no, don't, it is usually the result of someone trying to um, dehorn them. So they remove the horns for various reasons. Um, you can see Elliot definitely has horns uh, over here. Hercules. What you doing, Herc? Hi, sweet Herc. Hercules is munching, getting in some last bites of grass before everybody gets closed up for the night. And you can see Hercules has some beautiful horns as well. Um, goats actually need their horns for many purposes. Not only do they use them in play and to determine the hierarchy in a herd, but they will use them in the forest to scratch bark off of trees. They will use them to scratch their own backs. And they also help with temp temperature regulation. So I can actually feel that these horns are quite warm today because it's been pretty warm. It's been in the 90s today. And she is circulating blood through those horns and helping to cool the rest of her body. So horns are very important to goats and it's sad, a little bit sad for our goats here who have been dehorned, um, but we keep a little closer eye on them, make sure they're not getting too beat up in the herd. Um, luckily everybody gets along pretty well. Let's head this way and see if we can meet a few other goats. Everybody's out in the pasture right now grazing, getting little bites of grass in to finish out their day. interesting thing about goats, if you can maybe look closely at the eyes, is that they have a pupil, the black part in the center of the eye, that is not round like ours, but actually is almost like a straight across line. And what this does is it actually gives them a great deal of peripheral vision, and they're able to see a lot of what's happening behind them. If you've ever tried to catch a goat, good luck because uh, they know you're coming. And this really helps them in the wild as well with predators and being able to run away um, and make sure they're not caught. Now in the wild, uh, goats live in mountainous, usually forested habitats. So we're gonna go take a look at the back part of the goats area and also at their house to see 
uh, what kind of habitat they have here at the refuge. So come on guys, let's go do that. Come on. and Miyoko hanging out. Of course, Elliot has to come in and see what we're up to. Um, Miyoko is going to demonstrate one of the features of the goat house, which are what we call the goat shelves. So goats have a natural love for climbing. If you can take a look at Miyoko's feet, you will see she has two parts of her hoof. Those are called the claws, and those are adapted to being able to climb over quite rocky terrain and have very good balance. Now here at the refuge, we don't have any mountains for them to climb, so we built a couple tiers. Uh, our goat house here has the ground floor, the second floor, and then the third floor. Now what our goats do is lounge around on these shelves. They enjoy chasing each other and getting into goat antics, maybe taking a, a lounge in the middle of the day. But then at night, they love to go up and find their perfect little spot where they sleep. And this go gives goats a big sense of safety because in the wild they would naturally go to a highest point where they could kind of look down and look out for danger. So we love to see our goats settling up on their shelves just like they would in nature up off the ground. What do you think, Neil? Can I get up there? Yeah. Now we're going to check out the back part of the goats area. In this direction, you can see that they have a wooded habitat. Now, sometimes you'll come into the goat area and you won't see the goats anywhere and you'll say, what happened? Did they get out? Where are the goats? Well, in fact, they are way down in the woods, typically, on an adventure, eating bark, finding leaves, seeing what they can eat down there. Um, and it's very nice and cool and shady. So especially in the summertime, you will find the goats out there in the middle of the afternoon when it's the hottest. Uh, spending time in the shade and eating all of that um, that stuff from the trees. Now in nature, they actually eat bark, leaves, and small sticks. This roughage helps them clear out parasites that are in internally in their body. So it's very natural for them to eat this type of forage. And we're really glad that here at the refuge, we have that type of habitat to provide them. You'll also see some climbing platforms and over here, we've been working on a goat uh, pulley system. This is like uh, a ball that we can lower down. We'll sometimes cover it in treats like peanut butter or molasses and see if the goats want to play a little tether ball with each other here at the refuge. Hey everyone, we have moved over to Goat House 2 and I am just chilling out here with Ivy Goat. Um, Ace is also here munching in the background. You may hear him munching. You may be able to see him in a minute. Um, Ace and Ivy were actually some of the very first goats who came to the refuge in 2015. And they arrived here with their mother, Sweet Mama. Um, now last year, unfortunately, Sweet Mama passed away. But I like to tell her story because it's a really powerful one. And she basically got these babies uh, to safety. And they, she's the reason that they're here with us enjoying life at the refuge. Um, Sweet Mama was a goat who actually was used on a dairy farm, uh, we estimate for about seven years. Uh, every year she would be bred to give birth, and uh, goats typically have either one or two kids. Now on dairy farms, the babies are taken from the moms uh, on the day of birth or shortly after birth. And uh, when that happens, you can imagine, it's very stressful for the moms and the babies. Uh, mothers who have this happen on dairy farms, both at cow farms, goat farms, and sheep farms, uh, have been known to cry for days after their babies are taken. So they have a very strong connection to them, just like we do with our children. Um, the reason they separate them on dairy farms is that they want to uh, determine exactly how much milk they are taking for profit and how much they are giving to all of the, the goat babies or the kids who are born. 
So Sweet Mama went through this um, life, and eventually her body started to give out. She wasn't producing enough milk anymore, and the farmer decided to take her to a slaughter auction. Now, that would have been the end of her story, um, as is so common for so many animals. But Sweet Mama, as we learn from her personality here, is a fighter. And she managed to escape from that slaughter auction and find her way to a cattle farm across the other side of the road. Now, luckily for Sweet Mama, a kind woman named Lee was coming to this cattle farm to feed a group of feral cats. And when she found Sweet Mama, she said, I'm going to start to feed you too. And this was going on for several weeks. Now, to Lee's surprise, she arrived at the cattle farm with her treats for the cats and Sweet Mama to find Sweet Mama in the middle of giving birth to Ivy and to Ace. And at that point, she decided to look for a safe place for the entire family to come together. And so, uh, Sweet Mama not only saved her life, but she saved the lives of her two kids, Ace and Ivy. Um, up until the day that we had to say goodbye to Sweet Mama, uh, they would snuggle every day, uh, right here where you see Ivy hanging out in the grass. Uh, it often looked like a three-headed goat because they were so entangled with each other, you couldn't tell one from the other. And we just were so happy that Sweet Mama got to spend her last few years with some kids in a safe environment uh, where she trusted us and felt that she was loved. Hey everyone, we are here in Goat House One, hanging out with our pygmy goats. Up on the shelves, we have Moscato, the white goat, and her daughter, Mysteria. Ethan is behind me, and scratching his butt on this rock is Jonathan, who is the leader of the herd. Now, a lot of people will have pygmy goats for pets, and I'll tell you a few of the rescue stories of our goats here. I don't know if you can see on the top shelf, it looks like we have Electra also hanging out and just relaxing, beating the heat, and staying cool under the fans and in the shade. Uh, now, Ethan was actually rescued from a county shelter. Um, somebody had gotten him as a pet, didn't want him anymore, and relinquished him. Now, we don't know a lot about his past, but uh, what we do know is he was very scared to be touched and petted by us for about the first year of living here at the refuge. So something traumatic happened to him before he arrived. But now, he's a very friendly guy. In fact, he will often push his way in between you and another goat to get love. So we are so happy that he feels safe and relaxed and knows that he's in a good place. Uh, Moscato here and her daughter Wisteria actually came from someone who had goats as pets. Now it's very common for people to have goats in urban settings in your backyard in a city or a small town. Now this is often not the safest environment for goats and in Moscato and Wisteria's case they unfortunately underwent a dog attack. The other goats in their herd did not make it and Moscato arrived with bite wounds on her neck she was guarding her daughter, similar to how she is now, uh, from the dogs. And uh, luckily her wounds were not too severe. She was able to recover. And these two have been living here ever since. You'll never see one without the other, um, especially if we're doing goat health checks and we're holding one and checking up on them. The other one is always concerned. What's happening to my mom or to my daughter? And they, they always t uh, talk to each other a bit and make sure they're doing okay. Up top, you'll also see Lily and Electra. Both Lily and Electra lost their sisters to dog attacks. So this is a very common theme uh, that we see with pygmy goats, unfortunately. Now, uh, we also have our newest goat, who's just come into the goat house, Ponty. Now, Ponty actually has an interesting story. He came from Pittsburgh, which is the town where the refuge is located. And somehow Ponty got out on his own, and he was trying to survive in the wild. Now, he didn't have a lot to eat, so when Ponty came, he was extremely thin. And he had found a little home for himself out in the woods. It was an abandoned trailer, falling down full of junk, and in that trailer was an old couch with the springs showing and all the innards pulled out. Now, a man who lived next door noticed this goat Ponty was coming around. 
And when he went to investigate the trailer, he saw Ponty laying out on the couch with his legs up, like, welcome to my home. Now that was pretty funny, but uh, Frank, this man, knew that Ponty was not safe. He didn't have enough food, he was at risk of predators like coyotes. And so he reached out to us. Now Ponty did not know that the refuge was here and that he would find goat friends in the same home. So when we tried to catch him, it took several attempts and it was it was very difficult. He's a very smart and a very athletic goat. Uh, but luckily, we were finally able to catch him and he has been living the life since. Um, he has gained about 35 pounds since arriving at the refuge and he looks beautiful now. His, sh his coat is shiny, um, he's a great weight and he is still uh, making goat friends and uh, his, his favorite goat uh, in his area here is Lily. So him and Lily uh, became really close friends and I actually watched them both sharing a bowl the other night eating together, so it was very sweet. This goat who has come to tackle me with love is Todd. <laughs> now Todd was actually found wandering in Raleigh. Uh, it was picked up by animal control. So like I mentioned, a lot of people will have the pygmy or the smaller goats as pets in the city. What a love though. Now some of our goats, like Jonathan, have not only a beard, but little dangling things hanging underneath their chin. You might be able to see those hanging under Jonathan's chin. Those are actually called wattles. And wattles serve an ornamental purpose, that's about it. Uh, you have them just depending on the type of breed that you are. You'll notice some goats like Todd don't really have any beard or wattles, so that just depends on what breed they are. Um, another thing about Jonathan is his horns. It might be difficult to see. We'll try to get an angle on that. Um, I was talking earlier about how some goats have their horns taken off. Um, unfortunately, Jonathan uh, had both of his horns removed, but one started to grow back. Now, the way that uh, dehorning works is they actually cut off the horn at the base, and then they uh, try to burn that base. Uh, so that the horn won't grow back and so that the blood will stop flowing. But this is a process that unfortunately goats go through typically without a lot of pain medication or anesthesia on board. So it is very painful. Those horns are full of lots of nerves and blood vessels. So uh, we would never do it to our goats. Um, in Jonathan's case, we have to keep an eye on that horn that grew back in because it can start to grow wonky. It can start to grow towards their head, towards their face and cause damage. Now, one of the things we do every day here at the refuge is provide enrichment for the animals. This morning, this box was all closed up and it was filled with a mix of berries. And I can see that they pretty much eaten everything. They had a great time. Does that still smell good? There's a little strawberry right there. Um, this is something we do to engage all of our animal residents. We'll do food treats like this. Uh, in this case, they had to rip a box open to get it. Sometimes we'll scatter food all around for them to go on a scavenger hunt. Uh, we'll also do things like play music or show them mirrors, um, all sorts of different things to engage all of their senses. Thanks everyone for visiting us with the goats. If you have any questions or comments, Please leave them below and stay tuned for more videos with the animals.